Hi guys. Um, one of the chaps commenting on one of my rubber band powered videos mentioned that his car or his project the wheels have to be a maximum of one and a half inches apart. Now that's pretty narrow and I thought that might be interesting to have a go see if I could build one myself. Um, I've got no other details about his project so I'm not trying to copy his project or do his project for him. I just thought I might have an idea or have a go at making a very narrow rubber band powered car. And to do it I'm going to make the basic chassis out of these flower canes as they are called as I now realise. I thought they were just called garden canes but they call them flower canes. As you can see that particular one's not very straight uh, but I might even be able to work with that. Uh, for wheels I'm going to use some of these old singles or 45s as they're called, old records, vinyl records. I picked up some of them in a charity shop quite a while ago. I'll use them and I've got some bits of plywood here that are off cuts uh, from one of those kits that you push out the bits and make, in this case, a dinosaur. So there just might be some handy bits of plywood I can make use of to strengthen my project. So that's the target. A rubber band powered car where the wheels are a maximum of two and a half inches apart. I've no idea how long the car can be, so I'm going to take liberties and make quite a long, narrow car. Okay, first problem I come up with is my steel ruler is in centimetres, so I'm going to have to go and get a different ruler. Right, this bit of felt tip pen that I've just cut up, I've got a few of them. This is going to be my axle, that's the centre. I'm going to put two little pegs in it, one for the brake and one for the rubber band and the outer marks there are where the outside of the wheels mustn't go beyond. In other words, that's my one and a half inch marks. I'm adding this disc in the middle to keep the brake string away from the rubber band motor. Right, that's the back wheel and axle assembly up together. That's the front wheel and axle assembly up together. Those are spacers in there trying to keep it keep the wheels parallel to each other while their hot glue cools down. Now I'm hot gluing some cross members onto my cane chassis. I'll put at least three cross members on. Might even put a couple more. Right, I've hot glued three cross members in place. And I'm also wrapping some ordinary sticky tape around them to give them a bit more strength. I'm actually going to use the um, the nib ends of the pens, felt tip pens, as the bearings for the wheels. So I've got to hot glue these bits. Onto there. Right, we'll cover a few of the features now. I fitted a launch mechanism, or a release mechanism, just show. Uh, in the rim of the wheel, probably just see if I move my finger behind it, I've cut a notch. And then I've got a bent paper clip here, which fits into that notch. It's held in place by the tension of the main rubber band. Oh, just released it then, didn't I? Right, let's do that again. 
It's held in place by the tension of the main rubber band trying to turn the wheels. And to release it, all we do is we push down on that side of the lever. And away we go. Can't go very far because we're sitting on my table and it hits the end of the table. So that's the release mechanism. Very simply, notch in the rim of the wheel, a bent paper clip in a ball pen tube there. Got a bit of tension on it with a bit of rubber band there just to pull it out of the way so it doesn't catch again when it moves forwards. And release it like that. So that's our release mechanism. Here I've made a spool out of a couple of milk bottle tops. Uh, they're on a ball pen tube and the ball pen tube is rotating on a piece of barbecue skewer that's hot glued to the frame. So that's the pulley or the bobbin that will hold the string for the brake. If you remember, on the axle there, I've got a disc in the middle. On this side there's a peg with the rubber band for the engine, or motor, or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's where that winds up. The disc keeps it separate from this side where we've got another peg, and on there there'll be a piece of string that goes up to this pulley. The pulley is freewheeling. I've actually got a rubber band there so I can put a bit of tension on it if I need to. But that holds the string which is a certain length which you choose the length for how much string you want to get wrapped up on the back axle for when you want it to stop. I'll demonstrate that, that's easier to, explain, uh, easier to demonstrate than explain. But you have a certain amount of string on there, which goes to the back wheel. As the back wheel turns, it pulls it off the pulley and coils it up on the back axle. And when it comes to the bit where it's actually tied to the pulley, so it can't pull any more off, that stops the back wheel turning. So it's a brake. It's a measured brake. In other words, you can measure the amount of string you want on there so you can decide how far you want to travel before it stops. Right guys, time for a test run. We're shooting this in natural light this morning. It's relatively early in the morning in my kitchen so we've got sunlight just beginning to come in the back, which is why we've got some interesting light features going up through the kitchen floor. Anyway, here's our rubber band powered car. Um, we'll give it a test run and then we'll have a chat about it. Okay, so We'll press the launch lever. There we go, runs the length of the kitchen quite easily. Right, now this time I'll put the brake on it, which is just this length of string that will go onto the other peg, so it goes underneath, and hooks on the peg, so it's actually going around the axle in the opposite direction to the rubber band. mechanism in position. Are we ready? Okay, launch. Stop. 
stops. And it stops because the cotton up the middle there is now pulled tight. So it can't get any more off of the bobbin. So the wheel is now locked or braked. Braked? That doesn't sound quite right, does it? <laughs> the car has braked. <laughs> My knowledge of the English language has suddenly left me. Okay, so that was nice and simple. So launch mechanism, brake, rubber band power. And in this case, because I was inspired by somebody's comment, my wheels are less than one and a half inches apart. Because some chap's got a project where his car has to have wheels that are less than one and a half inches apart. And they have to be inside the chassis. So there we go, that's what I've done. I've no idea what dim dimensions his car needed to be. So I've taken liberties and making mine nice, nice and long and easy. Right, I'll put this down and we'll have a little summary. Right, summary time. Rubber band powered car. The chassis I've made out of a couple of flower canes. As I've now found out they're called. I've always been calling them garden canes. But they're, I think they're made of bamboo, but they're about, so in this case, they're nearly quarter of an inch thick. And I think these are actually 60 centimetres long, and I've just used them as they are, I haven't cut them at all. Cross members are bits of ball pen, or in this case felt tip pen. I've cut the tubes down hot glued them in place and then I've also wrapped clear plastic tape around them to give them a bit of extra strength. The wheels are records, old fashioned vinyl records, uh, 45s as you can possibly just see there, 45 RPM, which means, I can't remember what the diameter is, it's about 7 inches or something. The axles for them are again these felt tip pens. I've used them because they happen to be exactly the right diameter to fit inside the hole in the middle of these records. The bearings are actually the tips of the felt tip pens turned round and pushed back inside themselves. So it gives you a small bearing surface. I don't think you can see that. I've also got a um, paper clip going right through the middle just to hold them together in case they try and spring apart. Uh, the bearings at the ends are held onto the ends of the um, canes again with a bit of paper clip that's just a, a loop bent round hot glued onto the end of the cane and again I've wrapped some tape around it for a bit of extra strength. At this end we've got the same again, the axle is the felt tip pen tube. I've put a disc in the middle so that the rubber band winds up on one side and my brake string winds up on the other side. The way that works is the rubber band is wound up one way and as the rubber band unwinds it winds up the brake. And when the when all the brake string has come off this bobbin it's tied to the axle of the bobbin so that goes tight and stops the wheels rotating. Uh, the brake bobbin is just a couple of 
milk bottle tops on a, a again a ball pen tube and then that's rotating on in this case it's a barbecue skewer I've also got a rubber band going across the frame there that puts a bit of tension on that to stop it unwrapping when you don't want it to the launch mechanism again is just a bent piece of paper clip a nice big paper clip I've got just a single strand of rubber band on it to give it a bit of tension and then there's a slot or a notch cut in the rim of the wheel there so that that clips in place like that and is, and is held in place by the tension of the main rubber band it won't stay there at the moment because the rubber band is loose The idea is with the rubber band tight, that's this rubber band we're talking about, the engine. I suppose if I pull that tight, that'll hold it. Right, so that's holding it in place, and then that will release it and the wheel will spin. I mean it can't at the moment because the brake's on. And I think that's it. That's just a piece of tape on it to point to where the notch is in the wheel. If we pull the brake off. leave it notched on there at the moment. Right, so there we are, the brake wound up on there. Launch mechanism in place. And this time it will shoot off. Well, there we go. So there we go. Another rubber band powered car. I can't remember what number this one is but I'll put it in the video at the end.